Voices from the Vault is brought to you by the Shelter Island Historical Society. This story was researched, written, and read for you by Mariah Moore. Cornelia Horsford resided in Sylvester Manor before, during, and after the turn of the 20th century. Born and educated in Cambridge, Massachusetts, she spent the majority of her adult life as the Lady of the Manor here on Shelter Island, and these many years after her death, her imprints can still be seen in the lives of all islanders. However, her life was not solely on our little island. She traveled to Europe multiple times, and her childhood and young adulthood were spent among Boston's elite. Cornelia's father was Eben Norton Horsford, the baking soda magnate, Harvard chemistry professor, and amateur historian. Eben was, like many of his contemporaries, obsessed with proving that Christopher Columbus was not the first European to discover North America. General anti-Italian sentiments pushed Bostonians to seek an alternate historical timeline for their fair continent. More than one Viking saga from around 1000 CE told the story of Leif Erikson and others sailing west from Greenland and discovering a fruitful place they called Vinland. And the land west of Greenland is what is now Canada and the U.S. If the sagas are true, then the Vikings certainly visited mainland North America. But despite much searching, no evidence had been at the time yet found. Even studied maps of the East Coast and descriptions in the sagas and concluded that the Norsemen had landed in what was the modern Boston area. Following this conclusion, Horsford began excavation near his home in Boston, but died shortly after. On his deathbed, he asked his daughter to continue his work of proving Leif Erikson's temporary settling in Boston, and she did. She continued the archaeological dig in the place where her father believed evidence for Norse settlement would be found. Through the digging done there, the outline of a few walls, as if a home once stood there, and the remains of an outside fireplace was unearthed. The walls were unusual in building style for the area. Even the earliest post-Columbian settlers used hewn wood or mortared stone, but these walls were two layers of alternating stone and turf sandwiching over a foot of earth that acted as insulation. This style of home building was only found in Iceland and Icelandic settlements in Greenland. However, continued archaeological excavations found artifacts not from potential Viking settlers, but English and French colonists and indigenous peoples. Still, Cornelia was convinced that the house was built by Norsemen and was the definitive proof that Leif Erikson had discovered the North American continent. And she was partially right. We know now that the Viking sagas were true, if not perfectly accurate and Nordic-descended Greenlanders came to and temporarily settled on the tip of Newfoundland in Canada, too far north to be the fabled Vinland, at a place where we now call lens au Meadow. But the definitive proof Cornelia sought wasn't discovered for another 60 years. Still, Cornelia's work was published in a few popular magazines in her day, and her book was published despite the tenuous physical evidence and multiple logical leaps made. To this day, no proof has been found to say certainly that Vikings came as far south as Boston, nor solid evidence of settlement anywhere else that fits the Vinland bill. So the Horsfords may have been correct in their conclusions, but they came to these conclusions based on rather thin evidence. While archaeology was a great passion of Cornelia's, it was not her only passion. She was a member of the Garden Club of America, the New York Horticultural Society, and the Massachusetts Horticultural Society, in addition to a half dozen historical, archaeological, and antiquarian societies and clubs. Cornelia was the first to bring bamboo to Shelter Island, and likely to Long Island, much to many modern islanders' annoyance. Before her planting, bamboo was not recorded to grow in the Americas further north than North Carolina, but the sprouts she planted not only flourished, they threatened to take over her entire garden without regular and ferocious pruning, which is par for the course, as many bamboo growers can attest. 
Cornelia never married, entirely by her own choice. Several men tried to woo and marry Cornelia to no avail. She was happy as she was, an academic, elegant, engaging daddy's girl. In her later years, she would give candy to children in church, much like many older church ladies have since candy was invented. For a few years as Lady of the Manor, Cornelia held annual calf christenings, in which she would invite a few island children and a couple of her gardener cousins to her home, where they would ceremonially bestow calves with wreaths of flowers and a name chosen by Cornelia, after the Reverend Harold Thomas had blessed the young cows and before all going inside the house to hit a piñata. All this is great, but beyond the bamboo, none of these fascinating facts affect today's shelter islanders. But these traits and achievements are far from all Cornelia accomplished. When Eben Horsford donated the first books for Shelter Island's public library following the fire that burned the closet library in the general store, Cornelia took the mantle of library president and worked to grow and maintain the library which still, in another form, educates, entertains, and benefits islanders. She was a founding member of our own historical society which has worked for nearly a century to preserve, record, and disseminate local history. She had the historical windmill moved to her property when the land on which it stood in town center was needed, thereby preserving an invaluable piece of East End history in the form of an iconic structure that is lately nearly restored to its original glory. Cornelia was interested, invested, and passionate as a white woman of wealth, she had the time and resources to spend on pursuing her passions that most people do not have, and she took advantage of every privilege afforded her by her race, social status, and economic standing, and used them to chase and benefit what she loved, from history to horticulture to the people of our little island. The windmill Cornelia preserved has been on the National Register of Historic Places since 2009, joining the Haven's House, Union Chapel, and nearly a dozen more Shelter Island locations, including the unusual Smith Taylor cabin that sits in Cockles Harbor and was the domain of the famous Borax King. But that's a story for another day.